Tonight on Task Force Geek, we welcome back Doug Wood, and we'll talk about his comic Leap M, which is available right now on Kickstarter. We'll discuss the Image Comics uh, unionizing story and how the Eternals came in under estimates, and that's all coming up now. Welcome to Task Force Geek. My name is Dirk Hooper, and today I am joined by Scott. Howdy. Who has a cool shirt on. We'll talk about that in a second. Mm. <laughs> and Walt. Hey, everyone. Who just had his first day at work? How, how did that go? Went very well. All right. Very That's well. what we want to hear. Did you get a juice box? No. <laughs> Is that what you get on now at if the first day at work? Wow. Mm. We're, no. You get Walt, were you a... Were you a good boy? <laughs> All right. We also have friend of the show and comic magnate, Doug Wood. How you doing, Doug? Hello. Thank you for having me on again. <laughs> we love to have you on, man. You're welcome anytime. All right. There is our crew for tonight. And uh, we are going to go to Doug first, and we're going to talk about his new comic. So here we go. Mm-mm-mm. Maybe. <laughs> Where did all of this something that here we go? <laughs> oh my gosh, everything just changed. They they allow me to reorder these things. Now I can move these dumb things where I need them so I don't have to go through what I just did. That is exciting. Thank you, StreamYard. <laughs> so tonight we are going to talk once again to Doug Wood. And uh, what I would like to do is is start out, if we could, by talking about the uh, the origin or the how Leap M was originally with Action Labs. And then you mm-hmm. got control of Leap M. If you if you tell us a little bit about that, please. Okay. Um, let's see. Uh, this comic started a long time ago. I wrote it probably back in 2009. Uh, it took me a while to do a wow. good job on it. And um, I, I had an original artist. Um, he, uh, unfortunately, I got sick for a little bit, and we had, took a break. And when I finally got it pitched and accepted at Action Labs, he was busy. Uh, he was very popular right now. And uh, so I sent out um, a message looking for new artist. I got on board with uh, Matt Batalaga. I pronounced his name, I hope. And uh, we started at uh, Action Labs. And uh, it was pretty rocky from the start. We. Uh, hit right when the pandemic happened. We had already started. We gotten a lot of it drawn before suddenly uh, we, I found out from my letter that they had shut down. And um, it was just a pain because constantly nobody was messaging us. Yeah, you you're good. Oh, okay. Oh, I heard the oh. I was like, oh, you no, locked no, up no, just no, briefly. You're just good. Uh, for a second. Okay. You're okay, okay my good. So, yeah, so it was just like a constant back and forth with them and uh, frustrating. And uh, we never got paid once it came out. I asked for my rights back even before they released it. And they kind of just stopped answering my emails and started oh, going wow. to the artist. <laughs> uh, and from there, uh, I mean, the, the book came out. So we were just like, okay, fine, it's out. Uh, it helped us, at least it helped me in my career to kind of push forward. Hey, look, he's done some work. He's got some attention. Sure, published by and, a publisher. Uh, I mean, that's a big we deal. paid. Right. But we weren't getting paid. We weren't getting uh, reports back on how much we sold. Uh, wow. We never could get anybody to answer uh, emails. And uh, just a few months ago when uh, – Jared Lewin started talking about um, his troubles with his, uh, Action Lab, where he had had four issues in the in ready to go, and they they just kept pushing back his release date. You know, I just was like, okay, I know people keep telling me to just don't rock the boat, but I, I'm, I'm so tired of this. So I, I spoke up too, yeah. and it was just like, I wasn't happy. I, I never was happy. <laughs> like I said, I, I asked 
before it even came out that it was, you know, wasn't going our way and I wanted the contract terminated. And um, luckily, a uh, combination of Rich Johnston and uh, a, a big part in uh, Jeremy Whitley uh, put in a good word with uh, the publisher and just talked them into giving our, our right back. I think that's pretty. How, so, how long was it between the time that they uh, took control or whatever they were? You know, you were working with Action Labs. How long was it between the time that you started with them and the time that they released your rights? Let's see. Um, nearly a year. So we the book. Okay, so we signed the contract in January. We put out the of, book of twenty twenty uh, in. I'm sorry, 2020. We uh, we released the book in August of 2020. We didn't get our rights back until September of 2021. So yeah, a year. Right. A year. Wow. Year and a half. Wow. Really. Yeah. And, and, and we and and every month Matt sent emails saying like, "Hey, can you give us some kind of report? Well, how's this doing? What's going yeah. on? Or <laughs> just give us our rights back or something. Do something, you know." Yeah, it, we're not even if you don't want to give us money, just give us the rights back. It doesn't hurt you at all because it's right. a digital only release. You didn't print anything. You're I not see. on the hook for any money. I but see. No, they just kept ghosting us, and it was a really big frustration. That is a crazy deal. Um, you know, I I think that that's a. I mean, you were rewarded for speaking up. I mean, I understand how people were saying, you know, don't rock the boat. You don't want to be you know, seen as a troublemaker or something, but you did the right thing by speaking up. I mean, it actually created kind of a cascading event there. Yeah, I, I really appreciate Jared being one of the first people to say something, you know, like he didn't just go quietly and say like, oh, well, my book didn't come out. You know, he was like pushing and I, and it, and I, I'm a friend with him. And so we're just like seeing him, that's happened to him. I was like, it's this can't be this way. And so I, I just wanted to make sure people solid and you know so it wasn't just one person you know yeah let, let me get a few comments here that we got when we first started uh gg says Un unbelievable <laughs> performance thus far mr hooper <laughs> ronnie says hi how you doing hi. ronnie hey and ronnie. Shell says hey hello uh so how did Lee oh, i want to say uh, what you, sure sure yeah i was gonna say uh, i do i Several times in the last year, I kept getting messages from other creators saying, "Like, hey, are you having trouble with Action Labs? What's going on with Action mm. Labs?" And and for some reason, it was so it was so weird because I don't know why, but people just kept coming to me saying, "Hey, what's going on with Action Labs?" It's like, how would I? Know? <laughs> I'm, I don't know. No, I had a one shot, but I just I just kept I just kept fielding a lot of uh, comments from other creators, and it's just like. The, the, the list of people that got screwed over by them is not, do you, not okay. Do you want to talk about what you think happened, or would you rather just not worry about it? Um, I mean, from their end, do you have any speculation about... No, know, uh, my whole thing was, and I, and I think Matt kind of talked to me about it too, is they had the prime real estate. They were taking in a lot of books that they were releasing digitally in the pandemic. People had the time to be reading digital comics, especially when shops were not getting books. Why not yeah. capitalize that? Why not push that and get more money? And you could have yeah. had a better standing when things went back to print. At least if, if I'm not saying they did, but if they were in the hole or having some kind of trouble, why not put your eggs in the digital basket that you were already doing and push it a little bit harder and then you could yeah. have been in a better position than you were. You're saying that they didn't have the overhead of printing the things. They were putting it out digitally. So, yeah, that's, you know, that's why not? Profit. <laughs> yeah, why not? Yeah. <laughs> why not put it out digitally and collect the check? I mean, I don't, I don't get, yeah, yeah I don't get that at all. It doesn't they make had sense. zero marketing. It's like they wanted to just hold on to the IPs and it's like you're not capitalizing on it in the IPs by doing that. So, what's the point? What's the point? For sure. Well, I will say this, Doug. You know, uh, good leaders don't don't seek leadership; it comes to them. And I guess that's the reason why people were asking people you. People coming everything. to you. So, you know, more power to you on that one. You know, you you led the charge. <laughs> For sure, I appreciate it. <laughs> so you said that you created Leap In back in two thousand and nine. So it's been, yeah, you know, no, my, yeah, I just had you. this weird idea <laughs> my math is to me where, <clears throat> yeah, 
I just I, I just envisioned um, I've been watching a lot of um, locked up TV show with my wife. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, yeah. Did you guys freeze? No, I didn't. Okay. And and uh, and uh, with that, it just uh, this came to my mind of what happens if somebody was framed for murder and there's this technology that would push you to your your sentencing date in the couple hours that you're in this machine. And so the prison system is gone and done with. You don't have the overcrowding. You don't have the issues. <clears throat> and then just, I just, you had just this lose idea that of, time like, of your life. Yeah. Hmm. It's a pretty good concept. That's high concept, man. Yeah. I, and I love <laughs> that um, in the recent years, every time I, I'm on, the internet, I find new articles that like support that it's going to be happening in the near future because uh, started with like um, CRISPR where they were trying to find ways to prolong life. And instead, they kept finding in rats that they would uh, age them quicker instead. <laughs> and uh, and then uh, they're talking a lot about the VR technology of being able to play like uh, when you're sleeping, you always feel like you're uh, sleeping for a lot longer than you are. And they've got a way to do that with VR technology of making it feel like you're in some place longer than you actually are. And maybe you can do some like rehabilitation through that kind of process. Oh, oh I've <clears> never <throat> heard of that. That's interesting. <clears throat> yeah. It's, it's been crazy because I it purely off the dome, like concept in my head and all of a sudden like the science is becoming available. It's, weird. it's always, <laughs> it's always the way these things are. Fiction becomes reality. Yeah. So, your your artist that you found you said that you originally had another artist and now you you uh you talked to I'm going to call him since you're not sure I'm going to say Matt Battaglia. Yeah, I'm going to say that too. Maybe? Yeah. <laughs> um I, I keep I forget to ask. How did you find him? <laughs> Doug, how did you find him? Um, I found him through uh, Reddit comic book collabs. Uh, really? I made a post saying, yeah, I just said, hey, I, I have a publisher on board. Uh, I had some of the pages drawn and they were in on board, but they have given me their uh, availability, uh, availability to try to seek a replacement artist because the other guy was just, he had like three books announced all at the same time. So. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Must be nice. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah. <laughs> That's in high demand right there. Very yeah. cool. Okay. Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring up your your um, Kickstarter here, hopefully. Okay. There it is. Look at this. There it is. Leap in. No, I'm in you... the, the small, but we actually had uh, some printed up oh, earlier. I can, I can bring please. you up. Okay. I can bring uh, you up please here. ignore the, uh, the uh, where I'm covering my hand. These were printed early. Right. And... Uh, but uh, it looks really great printed. So that's what we're doing is we never got a print run. We feel like we were deserved a print run because we we are not supposed to, but we knew how much we sold and we sold, you know, fairly decent. And so we're, we're hoping to get that, that print run that we were owed. Cool. Did you print this up uh, for the um, for the purposes Matt, of just seeing how it would look? Matt did, yeah. That's what was okay. the purpose of it. And uh, that's interesting. I mean, that's kind of a neat way of doing that. I mean, being able to show the comic printed. So, you know, people need to know that it's done. You, they don't have to worry about whether you're going to complete it or not. You have a printed copy in your hand. So all you have to right. do is turn turn the crank and, and get those, you know, the printed stuff going. Yeah. You have It's a one a, shot. So the full story is available in this comic. There's going to be nothing else. So uh, you don't have to worry about, like, paying money and or trying to figure out when I'm going to put out the next issue. It's, it's here. Well, so Doug, you're, you're off to a good start because you've, you're 75% funded with 21 days left. So that's great. Yeah. And I got a new job. So that means I'll have a decent paycheck coming in. That means I can start buying, <laughs> buying some of these Kickstarters now. That's right. Thank you. <laughs> that's right. That's a good point. So yeah, 104 backers that that's not too shabby. I mean that's excellent. Yeah, that's we really uh, we really wanted to capitalize on the buzz we kind of got from from speaking up. So uh, we uh, actually had been talking about 
uh, running this for a while and we just like, well, can we do it without their permission and stuff like that? So we were already kind of like one foot in. So we were already kind of ready. So once we get the rights back, we're like, bam, let's go. And, <clears throat> and we're so happy that people have stuck around even after the, it's been quiet for a little bit and they jumped in and helped support us. So you, this Matt Battaglia does the uh, art f- for this, and you have uh, who is doing the not to put you on the spot? <laughs> who's doing the color work for this? He is as well. Uh, oh, he's I doing a, both. I was about to ask. <laughs> so he's doing the full yeah. deal. He's doing pencils, yeah. inks, well, and colors. Yeah, full. Uh, yeah, that. Um, he was actually a colors for a lot of um, like some images books. Like if you know Roche Limit, he was the colors for that. Uh, back okay. in the early, uh, early mid two thousand, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, from Image Comics, and yeah, he 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 um, was kind of getting known as a colorist, and he just like I want to get back into art, and I want to get back into drawing, and this was his first attempt to get him back into. I mean, you can the colors, great. Yeah, yeah. I, was a, I was about to ask the same question, Dirk, because I was looking at the pages here on the Kickstarter, and I was like, oh, I wonder who the colorist is, and. You you beat me to it. So, um, but yeah, the colors how, are. Nice. How would you describe how would you describe this artwork? I've got maybe a couple people in in mind, but if anyone wants oh, if to you want to go by people, yeah, um, there's definitely some Frank Miller in there. I see Frank um, Miller. Yeah, I was saying that too for sure. Yeah. Especially with the cover, De- Dennis Cowan. Yeah. I see his, maybe a little Dennis Cowan. There's a little, there's a little bit of his yeah. ink inking style in with uh, Dennis Cowan for sure. Um. I mean that's I th- a. I think I think Matt would say that too. Yeah. Uh, 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 and a that's a good place to be. Yeah, there's Sin- a little Sinkevich. Sinkevich is in there. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, and it fits with the. It yeah. Fits very well with your story. Yeah. Yeah. I think people can that, see. I, I mean. Oh man, he, this looks he good. gave me one other one, but I man, I'm blinking. It was a really. Are cool you saying? One too. I was like, he he was so, giving me one other artist, and it was. So we was like, we yeah, nailed the ones that that he said. Yeah, yeah. See, hey. I feel I feel real good about that. Do too. we know what we're doing here or, or not? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, I mean, I really like the look of this. Uh, this is very much up my alley. It's very gritty. Uh, again, the colors are. I mean, Scott has said many times how important color is. Color can make you or break you. Yeah. yeah. I, and I it's just, very. I, I've done black and white i did the project uh you know big hype and that did well black and white i did savage wizard and we struggled in black and white and uh i mean if you go back to this this is color and we're not struggling and so i mean there's there's definitely color still still rules savage <laughs> wizard yeah. did, did that fund or not yes it did okay that's what i thought you said yeah. you struggled you're saying it it held out to the last minute it yeah pretty close to <laughs> we that was such um, a cool project I mean, it, it is <laughs> uh, we 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 got nearly 400 backers you know it's a it was a big turnout but it was at the same time we, like we were asking so much it was kind of like are we going to make it type of deal <laughs> what was the goal on that 6000 for that one let me let me put up this thing briefly here so if people are interested in <clears throat> going over there right now and bidding on this, you you do have twenty one days left, yes. but um, I mean it's leap scroll in down just a little slash, bit more because I, I really love sure. that next page. Sure, sure, yeah, Doug. I uh-huh. I, I say this, I say this <laughs> all the great. Time. I say this all the time. I think it's a good spot to be at where where a comic, independent comic, is you know the five to six dollar range. So with you know shipping and everything, I pay about ten dollars instead of like these. 15 to 20 tier, which yeah. a lot of times on a, with a man with a family <laughs> and, and one budget for his household, you know, sometimes that makes or break what I back or not. And for yeah. $6 plus shipping, obviously you can get a physical copy of leap in. And I'm telling you right here, I scrolled down and I noticed this and I can, I can speak from this. There's a pledge for $14 to get leap in. And Ultramax physical bundle, so you get the the trade of Ultramax and Leap In. I have Ultramax. I've read Ultramax. I like Ultramax. So Thank that you. is a great, great deal for fourteen dollars. There's also, and I'm assuming this is by Matt himself. There's a copy of Leap In and the Ghost of Carousel. 
yes. uh, physical. Am oh, I saying God. that for Anthem? Yes. And I haven't, he, uh, I haven't seen that, but that's a good way to get that. That's cheap. And then the last one, and then I'll let you speak. Uh, there's other tiers, but <laughs> $40. Get one character commission from Matt. Each commission, a 9 by 12 comes wow. with a physical copy of Leap M. $40, and you'll get it before yeah. Christmas. Wait a minute. So you're, it's pretty see, incredible. You're going to get a physical? Great. You're going to get a 9 by 12 physical piece of characters. art? Yes. That's that insane. A, that's a great deal. So that's, if you're out a, there. That's a on, tremendous deal. What are you talking about? I mean, $40. Yes. I mean, that's, uh, you know, you could charge yeah. a lot more than that and not get a comic or anything else. Right. I mean, Anyways. I, mean, I just wanted to tell you all about the good deals. That's a great deal. That's that's good, Scott. <laughs> that's <laughs> I, good because that I was is a say, uh, that's a hot deal. His, his book, his book, uh, his Ghost uh, Ghost of the Carousel. That was a project he had already started before I met him, and that was what I saw in his his portfolio that said, "Oh my God, I want to work with this guy." It was haunting. It was. Um, just I don't I don't know it's like it has its quiet moments it had its acting and it had everything that I really was like yes this is the guy that I had to go with and um, he lucked uh, not lucked he worked hard and he got in with uh, Dauntless uh, Dauntless Stories it's a new publisher and they printed up in these gorgeous bigger size uh, I think the Black Label books like size mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and from the DC and. Yeah, and they, and they're just—it's just gorgeously sized, and 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 it—it shows his art to the to the max, and his inking is—it's—it's it's a beautiful package. Matt's uh, credits here is uh, Z Two Comics, Image Comics, color on colorist on Roche Limit you mentioned, and Boom Studios colorist on Dead Letters and cover artist and colorist on Hellraiser Bestiary. Uh, not oh, too shabby. Letters. Oh, I didn't know who that. <laughs> See, I, I to... we're informing here. I, I love dead letters. Hey, just for a minute, since I'm on this right now, can we talk a little bit about the Phoenix Comics Collective and what that means to you? Yeah. Uh, so I had been talking for a long time about. Hey, I keep seeing there was a white noise writers collective. It was just a group of guys in London. They got together and shared a studio space, and it really worked for them because they were bouncing ideas off each other. They're strengthening each other's works. And I said, in the digital age, we don't need a studio space. Why can't we do over Zoom calls? Why we can't we do in Discord groups or even Twitter DMs or whatever and be this group that like makes each other stronger and we're all together so we're not just like shouting out to the void of our own group we can have everybody else's like and um i was lucky enough to have 25 different people say hey let's let's do it and uh i couldn't believe how many people said yes (laughs) because uh, pretty much everybody said yes that i asked and uh i expected a lot of no's (laughs) and we've come together uh we've ran this will be number 10 uh kickstarter since july and every single one of them has funded uh, over their funding and um, it's just been awesome to talk to these people and work with these people and help promote them and learn about them and stuff like that. Our buddy Stoney's on that list. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah, I'm looking at the list right now. Early um, I, I just sent an email to you today. I don't know who answers those emails, <laughs> but I said, oh, you know, uh, we'd love to help you promote whatever it is that you have through there. I mean, we know you two and I'm sure that the rest of the gang is cool too. You know, you, you know what that put you us know on your re- tour. <laughs> you know what that reminds me of? And very few people ever talk about this, uh, man of action entertainment. A- any of you familiar with man of action? I've heard yeah, of man not, of action. not at all. Okay. Yeah. So man of action, they're the guys who produced, uh, claim to fame uh ben ben 10 10. and uh it's the the group of guys and you're gonna you're gonna recognize these names joe casey joe kelly duncan rollo and steven t siegel it's those four guys oh okay and and those four guys have been producing uh some really good animated tv shows i mean like the, the the first version of ben 10 when I'm bored, 
that's one of my go-to shows to watch because I, I <laughs> for some reason that show reminded me so much of uh dal h for hero so yeah but I, you oh, know yeah. you're the the phoenix you know when I, I started thinking about that you know about how the the phoenix collective bunch of writers getting together and bouncing ideas off my off their head it made me think of man of action entertainment and i, I think it's a great idea I, I you know uh i don't think enough people get credit for grouping together like that so yeah i i i, I felt like when i talked about it as just writers group i felt like there was a little bit of pushback because i think people didn't envision it but once i started talking about just creators in general i felt like mm -hmm. that's where the harmony people just saw the vision they're like oh, okay yeah 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 and um it's been i just kept saying like hey we're stronger together we're not you know right uh, this is definitely <laughs> the era that you want to you know be helping each other out uh yeah. liking stuff and sharing stuff and and Court. I mean, look. Everyone has their own idea of how to run a Kickstarter and what their their keys to success are, which I'm going to ask you about here in just a second. Okay. And then, um, you know, everyone has their idea about who who has the best printing service, and yes. <laughs> you know how to do. I mean, seriously, there's so many e even little a, even things our group that it's you a need to know. Yeah. Of course, <laughs> of course. But I mean, that's a heck of a lot better than being out there on an island and trying to figure right. all that stupid stuff out on your own. Exactly, and and we. That's another thing too. I like to say is, um, we are together, but we are a resource for other people too. If you're new to this, or if you are just lost and have questions about Kickstarters, where to print at, different publisher works, contracts and stuff like that. We have a lot of people with wealth of talent and knowledge and we can, we'll can be here to help you like answer questions and everything like that. Doug, that's awesome. Yeah, that's it's a great cool. thing. It's a great thing. Absolutely it is. Let's get that, let's get that Kickstarter back up there for just another second. Uh, so what, Doug, what is the key? You've had several successful Kickstarters and some that were just like crazy. I mean, you know, really good money. Um, what's your key yeah. to running a successful Kickstarter? Uh, Coming on Task Force Geek. Yeah. Next. That's, <laughs> <laughs> that's all you need. Every single one. I've, I've been on you guys. I mean, I haven't missed you guys on a single one yet, so... Hey, we're, that's right. We're going to take credit for that. <laughs> we're going to be somebody's good luck charm. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't know. I sometimes I feel like um, I can't really take credit for some of it. You know, like um, Big Hype had other big names on it, so that helped push that. Uh, uh, Savage Wizard was me and Les, so I feel like it's a joint collaboration. So. Uh, I mean I that's it, uh, that's kindness, I good guess, advice right there though. Thing. Yeah. You say what do you say kindness? Yeah, I just feel like um, I put out a lot of kind energy to people, and I think people respond to that and want to sure. be a part of it. And I think that's that's been my biggest thing is like I'm always on Twitter uh, talking up people's work, and I'm always you know asking how their day is going and stuff like that. And I think that it, it helps. It never hurts anybody long term to be kind to other people. Certainly and does not. <laughs> some days when I get older, I you'll figure back, that out. No, no, I, I, I think Spicy back. Or, I think back when I was younger, how if I would have maybe planted more seeds instead of Definite. being just, just being, you know, growing up. Yeah. Uh, you know how I could have changed maybe the path of somebody who knows for me it's not being more kind it's being more open I wish that I had been more open when I was younger dang not... Doug let's get naked what is go what what's going on oh, here? Oh, <laughs> he's, just, oh. he's just losing a layer wait a Come minute on, it's it's ladies night <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, see how red my face is I'm, I'm overheating over <laughs> <laughs> uh, hey, what's, what's the song it's getting hot in here that's right. Yeah. Someone's got a Hey Jerry. I thought we maybe unlocked some Kickstarter goal where Doug takes his wow. shirt off and Is that is that what's happening here? I mean The Phoenix uh, Collective started some way, right? 
But I, I think <laughs> I think I think you saying be kind is is a great deal. I've said that many times. One of the the main extra thing I do a lot of videos on social media and stuff, and one of the things I say is be nice. Just be nice to people. Um, you know, it's so underrated as as something that you know can can help you and help other people. But also, you mentioned collaborating with other people. And, you know, the more people that you can collaborate with on a project, you know, you get their, you know, you get their platform or their network and you get, you know, other people and it, it compounds. So, uh, absolutely. Something Uh, like big hype had how many creators was on that? uh, Let's let's just say 24 times, at least two per so about 48 ish. Yeah. So I mean, some creators and you got all of their, they're all pushing. I mean, ideally they're all pushing that. I mean, you have all of their platforms, whether they're small or big or whatever. I mean, yeah. that, yeah, and, that was a great deal. You've got individuals who are saying, Hey, I'm in this, I'm in this publication. And, and that's also getting everybody else attention, you know, surgery. And so, like, people are buying that one publication to see their friend. <laughs> what is or the whatever. show talking about? <clears throat> What's that? Oh, about being kind is so rewarding. So put down your money, Jury. Get it? Because he was <laughs> taking his shirt off. I he think that maybe Jury, uh, Shell was saying Jury's going to tip Doug. Right. Yeah. Uh, you know, Scott had a lot of days at the, you know, at the strip club. I'm... Dancing. A lot well, of days. A I... lot of days dancing. I wasn't a good dancer, so I had just to rely on like shaking my cheeks. So, but it worked. It paid the bills for a little it, while. But Chip and But all the men got mad and at me because, like, anyways, they left me, so I didn't get the, I didn't get tips anymore. What, what was that? Uh, what was that movie about? That um, about men dancing? That Magic wasn't, Mike. But wasn't that based on you, Scott? Magic Mike. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they wanted to call it sensational Scott, but it just didn't flow Ch- like Channing, Magic Mike. <laughs> Channing Tatum is like, man, I got to get in good shape because I'm I'm playing Scott. Yeah, <laughs> right. Get out of here. <laughs> uh, let's see, um, uh, Doug. What what projects do you have coming up next? Because I know that you've always got like four or five other projects coming. Um, I'm hoping here in the first part of. 2022 it's a little book called i, I call uh, in the pale moonlight uh, i think i talked about you this last time it's um what if what if batman was trapped in limbo with oh, yeah, seven yeah, yeah. other batman replicas and <clears throat> one of them murders the other one and how can each batman solve a murder and they're all equal and there's no bad guys to rough up for answers like where 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 does the even playing field level of things off Nice. That's when does cool. that come out? Yeah, how long is that until we get that? I'm I'm hoping I'm hoping February. Uh, I was just talking to the artist again today. We were trying to decide. I think I think we're gonna draw out the first chapter and then try to kickstart for the other two chapters, and nice. so um, see how that goes. Uh, and then Big Hype Volume Two. We pushed it back a little bit. Uh, our yeah. friend um, Sam Owens uh, ran a pretty similar project called jump tails and it did not meet its funding and i wanted to give him another shot because he wanted to go again in the february march time when we were going to go and i said no i believe in your project i want you to go without us competing against you or wow. he's in our book too so he, uh we're going to push back till june uh, probably and then uh, doug you're pretty awesome man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah uh that's good that's- Let's get him on the show. Let's promote his book. Yeah, yeah. Send him, send him our way. We'll do, we'll do what we can. Send us some of these artists too. We, we love seeing, you know, talking to artists and stuff. Um, okay. Uh, my, my last question for you here in your segment, it, unless someone else has something, or anyone who's watching has something, please send it in now. Uh, tell us something that we don't know about you, Doug. Ooh, yeah. Give us some, uh, something good. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I, have I talked about? I used to jump out of airplanes for a living. No, let's something. let's hear that. Yeah. Uh, so I, when I, I was in the army, I jumped out of the airplanes. Uh, it's brutal. Uh, they hook you up, and the parachutes are meant to fall as fast as possible because it's not like the high high elevation stuff where you can control yourself. It's just 
splat and uh, wow. try to feel better. So they just dump you basically out <laughs> of the or, plane. Were you scared yeah. shitless every time? Because no, I would have been. It was the weirdest, uh, the weirdest like thing because I um, I was supposed to be number two. There was supposed to be a lieutenant in front of me because they always made officers jump first. And for some reason he wasn't there. And so for my very first jump, I got to stand at the door. And you would think, oh, I'm scared. But no, it, it was just, it was this kind of calming that not have to worry because um, you have these uh, ropes you have to hand off. And if you don't do it oh, properly, it you can get it wrapped around your arm and just pop by your arm. Oh. And so, uh, yeah. So I, I think the not have to worry about fumbling things and going at a proper pace so you don't run into the guy in front of you. Uh, it was just a better experience for me. So airborne? Yeah, I, I couldn't do it, Doug. And so, you're, so you're saying that it, it, you weren't scared by doing that? No, uh, there are. I mean, there are horror stories. You hear people landing on top of another person's like parachute, and you have to kind of scramble to get off so you don't collapse them. Uh, I had a sergeant that um, got caught on the cord that never came out and pulled out a chute, and so he was slamming against the the side of the plane. Uh, I mean, there was dangerous things that can happen, and uh, I did fall and slam my head and give myself a concussion on my fourth jump. You need a five to pass uh, airborne school, and so I got an extra five jumps because they made me start the whole course over. <laughs> oh wow! So I, uh, I had nine jumps before I was even uh, at at my station. <laughs> How many uh, total jumps you do? Uh, over twenty at least. I, I'm pretty sure. Oh, wow! God, dang it, so, dude. Uh, so you I think I could do that once. What's that? What's that saying? Uh, snipers clear the way, airborne all the way. That... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> See, I know my stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I, I I also have to say is I I played baseball. I was a catcher for many years and blew up my knees and then jumping out of airplane compounded that. So oh wow oh, Very, yeah. oh yeah those land those landings are brutal with uh with the you know because those parachutes like you said are designed to get you down fast. So, yeah. so and, you're, and you're, the, the weight of your gears dragging you down even faster. So, oh, man, that's that's the only that's the only thing about it that is I'm like, really oh, that'd be cool. that question. It's like it'd be cool to jump out of airplanes, but not with all that gear. Yeah, uh, <laughs> no, no, it really wouldn't. Well, there's I mean, right now, you could take me up in a plane and say you could have 20 million dollars and I'd be like, uh, I'll just work for the rest of my life. Yeah. Well, uh, well, right. Some of the uh, some of the aerobatic pilots that uh, that I used to know at air shows, you know, sp specifically the senior guys, you know, they always start off the air show with the uh, the skydivers, and they're like, they're like, I do flips in my airplane. Those guys are jumping out of perfectly good airplanes, and they call me crazy. You know. <laughs> like, <laughs> That is quite a deal. Jerry yeah. says that so we should cool. all answer that question. Does Something anyone else want to take people that? People don't know about us. Yeah. Does anyone else want to take that question before you we all? Move on? You all already know about things that you didn't. That's know. the thing is most. So. This gang probably knows all this stuff about and, us. And, and so, I, so, might, so, I might have one. So I was drawing like monsters and you know creatures and all this stuff, and I remember I drew like what. As a kid, I, I thought, I guess, I was drawing, like, a dinosaur or some type of monster. Well, I guess my mother thought I drew, like, a rhinoceros, and she sent it into the, remember the, uh, not Bozo, we didn't have Bozo around here. We had Ho-Ho. Ho-Ho Ho -Ho the, the Clown. clown. I right. think I shared this before, but I'm not yeah, sure. That's okay. Yeah. And, and, it's a good story. But she sent it into the Ho-Ho show, which it <laughs> happened to land and show up during, like, circus or zoo week. And I won the Ho Ho show with a picture that was never really intended to be like a rhino or whatever it was. And I got this giant, <laughs> just, I mean, I say giant. When I was a kid, it was like bigger than me, but probably in real life, it was probably like this big. It was a big tube of Tootsie Rolls. That was my, that was my, you know, winnings for doing that. That's heavy and, when you're a kid. That's heavy. Oh, gosh. I thought I won like a million dollars. So. <laughs> Hey, I, you know, speaking of Ho-Ho Show, not too many people know this. Uh, I did get a walk-on on the show. I delivered, wow. his, I delivered his newspaper, and that was that was my That's prize. Right. He would sit there and read the newspaper. Yeah, that was. Which that I thought was, was one of the weirdest things for a clown a to do. Show. Hey, yes. 
It was current events. Let's read the newspaper. Current events. Kids. Anyway, I I want it for <laughs> I want it for uh, reading the most kid or reading the most books for in Oklahoma City for you know riff you know. What was the puppet's name? Uh, Pokey. Cookie? Pokey. Pokey. He was just a crappy sock puppet. He was he a was sock crappy. puppet. Hey, he if you can, so great. if you can find the cut scenes on YouTube, it's pretty funny. Po- of, of Ho-Ho? Of, yeah, of Pokey, specifically Pokey. He, wow. The, the guy who, who worked that puppet was a card. Walt, you yeah. want to... Uh... I, you wanna... I, I'm looking this up right now, man. Ah. So depressed. <laughs> <laughs> he's the most depressed clown I've ever seen. He's a little. He's a little. <laughs> yes, that's part but of you know the uh, charm of Ho Ho. Is that, that he's a little. Okay. He's kind of an old man, and he reads the paper. You know what though? He's kind of not God, happy really about his gig. De- he is depressing looking. Oh my but gosh! You know he was the nicest, one of the nicest oh, people sure. in the world. I'm sure. I mean, if you can, if you can list, you know, if there's a tree starting from Mister Rogers on down, he's somewhere on that tree. <laughs> yeah, but he looks like the homeless clown guy. I got to see him without the makeup on. <laughs> Sean told me a story about Mister Rogers last night. Apparently, someone contacted him and said that that one of his fans, a little girl, had cancer or something. He immediately got on a flight and went to see her and took the the puppets and stuff to her bedside. And they have pictures of it. That's, That's who Mr. Rogers is. Check That's that crazy. out. Yeah, for yeah. sure. Uh, Walt, you want to get in on that question? Or do I, you, I just, do you I wanna... just did. I just did. Come that. on, Walt. Uh-huh. Didn't you jump out of a plane or something? I just, yeah. I just mentioned I mean, the whole, kind whole of, clown. You I say you love GI Joe, but you don't. Obviously, I just, I just mentioned doing the walk on on the Ho Ho Show. He kind of, he kind of trumped us with "I've jumped out of a plane twenty times." Yeah, he already took off his shirt, Jerry. What else you want? Yeah, wow. I mean, I'm I'm not gonna I'm not gonna bring up uh, doing karaoke with a group of porn stars. So that's because this is a family show. Hey, oh, what was his name? Her, <laughs> oh. ver- hers, ver- hers, multiple hers. Wow. Okay. Well, well, right. but this because this is a family show, so we're not going to discuss that. Does anyone have any other questions for Doug? <laughs> no, Doug, I think you, you're you like the hardest working man in comics, man. You're always going and keep doing it. Oh, I, I'm yeah. supposed to say something? I, I, Okay, I'll say something you guys don't know. I just won Best Lifestyle Podcast. I awesome. won it on Friday. How about that? Ooh. So I am now award-winning podcast producer. Dark Hooper, thank you very much. How about that? We need a we need a, an applause soundtrack. <laughs> oh, that would be cool. That would be cool. They need to allow us to do audio and stuff, so I can do things like that. So that I can do, you know, cheers and like the the uh, hey, the had, Price Is Right sound. If you had OBS, you could do that. The horns. You can do that with the OBS. Can you? I I just need to do that then. You just sure. need to do it. Uh, Brian James, who probably is uh, very excited that we're talking about Ho-Ho, said, <laughs> <laughs> said if Ho-Ho had the grand prize game and Archway cookies, Scott and I would never have changed the channel. <laughs> that is true. I love the grand prize game when I could watch it at my grandma's house. So, True story. That what is that? Bozo? Bozo that, has the that was Bozo. I always yeah. got mad at the kid that like missed the second bucket. I wanted to, <laughs> I wanted to go through the TV and like I wanted to be the drop kick kid who when the kid missed the bucket, little fat Scott ran in and I just drop kicked the yeah. kid. I was like, <laughs> How can you every, miss the second one? Every time they missed the second bucket, I used to go through the roof. Oh, I was right there with you. I'm like, how all you had to do is just reach out and just drop it. How See, did you miss it? If Doug was there, he would have been nice and encouraged him. Next time you'll get it. <laughs> Scott would have drop kicked him. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that would have been that would have been good uh, video there. Uh, Jerry says that Doug is definitely the hardest working man in comics. Oh, thank you. <laughs> uh, then she says, "Congrats to me." And then Maxine says that we're on. Hello, we're Maxine. On. We're on. It's nice to see you there. And uh, Michelle says, congratulations. Anyone else for, for Doug? 
before we move on to the next thing? Get out and support him. Thank you, Maxine. Yeah, let's let's get all of your stuff here to make sure that we get that. This is just for those who don't know. How would you not know by now? We've had him on the show so often. Leap this is M, Doug y'all. Wood, but he's talking about Leap Imp. If you can't find the links to it, just put in Leap M, and it will take you to that on Kickstarter. And there, just so like everybody things. knows... Just so everybody knows, on uh, Kickstarter, if it comes up as Leap M um, by Bant. I can't B- say it's Bataglia. Last name. I'm Bataglia. Going to say. I mean, when I searched for Leap M, that immediately popped up. So you can just type in Leap M Kickstarter, and that will pop up instantly. So that's tell, what I did. Tell Matt we'd like to have him on the show. Yes, he, I he, think he wants to be. He's so. He's got some cool stuff there. We'd like to talk about it. Yeah. Um, there's, look, not only, not only does Doug preach kindness, if you go to his Twitter account, you see it every day. He shares stuff from all over the, uh, the comic universe and, um, yeah, is very generous with your time and, uh, you know, putting forth other stuff. Um, so anyway, like, you should, a lot of Mondays, I like to run like, uh, friends, uh, make comics friends. Like yesterday I had did it pretty well. Uh, a lot of people showed up and just, they just wanted to make friends because it, maybe they didn't have the ability to go to cons or whatever. And they just wanted yeah. to try the thread and see if they can meet new people. That's really cool. Yeah. Definitely a nexus of activity over there on his stuff. And uh, go to Doug A. Wood 1 on Gumroad, and uh, you can get some of Doug's comics on there. Is that is that electronic versions? Uh, that and, and, books, and there's there's print, print too. Uh, okay. We have up there uh, still got a lot of uh, Project Big Hype available if anybody would like a copy. That is a cool, cool I, comic, folks. If I you haven't, to, if you don't have that, I need to go that. there. I I now know what I'm going to buy. The second item, I I can't put you first on this one. The second item that I'm uh, going to buy uh, when I get my paycheck this weekend. <laughs> Doug, I would I, I would make you first, but I you know I'm I'm Rent, making my I last. Understand. No, no, <laughs> I, I already I already made a promise to. I'm sorry to do my to do one mean thing. And I got to do that one mean thing. So. Wow! Wow! Are you like so, putting out a hit? You're doing. Well, don't answer. That, don't answer. Don't answer. Don't Is answer. Just like dirty deeds done dirt cheap. No. It's it's nothing. <laughs> no, nobody will die. Oh, okay. Unless they laugh too hard. Wow. So, uh, Doug, <laughs> real quick, real quick, tell us about what big hype is because I, I think that people would really enjoy it. You can get it over okay. over here while he's telling okay. us. Okay. Uh, Leap in oh, good for is you there. a 300-page uh, comic where we tried to kind of recapture Shonen Jump from uh, from, from manga. It's uh, a bunch of jumping on points for people's stories. If they wanted to try to tell a story and find an audience, they got into this uh, book. And it's just fun stories. There wasn't really a theme other than, hey, write something fun, nothing depressing. <laughs> right. And uh, well, and, Scott's uh, showing it here. Um, there's a there's a lot of really good artwork in that book. Uh, it's uh, it's fu- you know, look if you got like a weekend or something to kill, that this is a great thing to take with you because it's a bunch of different stories, bunch of different artists and writers. Uh, it's all really cool stuff. Uh, yeah. I mean, Big Hype is one of the coolest projects that I think's come through here for sure. It's a good book to put like right by your nightstand, read a story, and then go to sleep. If you yeah. have trouble calming your brain down, like me, and me, faux shizzle. I don't have that problem, but I definitely will read a book. What is this <laughs> barnyard in orbit by Perry and Kingsley? Is the theme for the ho ho show? Yeah, 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 yeah. The song, the song that they used to play. I don't even remember that, Scott. Do you remember that song, bro? I never knew. I never knew. The, I forgot how sad he looked until Doug just brought it up. So like. <laughs> I, I always don't. felt like he was super sad looking too. <laughs> uh, rest in peace, oh, oh. Rest in peace. All right, we're moving on to our next subject here. All right, we're 
trying something new here. We're going to try to put this into a block as Task Force Geek News. And uh, I've got a couple of stories here. And so I'm going to begin with our first one, which is Image Comics will not voluntarily recognize Comic Book Workers United, which was formed by staffers there this week. The union is a first for major comics publishers. In a statement on its website, Comic Book Workers United says it was the spirit of the founders of Image that inspired them to organize. Quote, their dreams of self-determination and more equitable treatment in the industry they loved and helped make successful are also our dreams, it wrote. Motherboard reached out to Image Comics to ask if they would voluntarily recognize the union. Initially, it sent a statement saying that, quote, Image has always believed in the fair and equitable treatment of staff and has always strived to support employees to the best of our company's ability with regard to their employment. This afternoon, it followed up with another statement which said earlier this week, the Communications Workers of America, CWA, filed a representation petition with the National Labor Relations Board to hold a secret ballot election so that eligible members of the Image Comics office staff can determine if they want the CWA to represent them in their employment with Image. The NL. RB is currently reviewing that petition to determine when that election will be held, where it will take place, and who can vote. Uh, quote, everyone at Image is committed to working through this process, and we are confident that the resolution to these efforts will have positive long-term benefits, unquote. So, to our panel, and first, to Doug, our guest, do you think the comic industry needs a union? Oh, absolutely. Uh, comic books needs to be able to take care of it themselves <laughs> in some way. If that's the union, then that's the way it's going to have to be. Um, the big thing I say is, how did the rebels of Image Comics go from uh, that image to the man, basically, that they were once fighting when they were you know, younger? Agreed. <laughs> that's true. Agreed. Agreed. That is interesting. Um, Scott, what do you think? Do you, you, you what do you think about this, and what it, and why do you think that they chose Image Comics to go after first? I I really don't know. I I'm still kind of confused by the whole topic, even though you just read it all out. I mean, that's like, cool, man. It's I mean, all they're right. trying to unionize, and then they're going. I I don't know, but I'm kind of like Doug. It's like you think Image would be all behind this, but it, you know. 25 years and a bunch of success or almost 30 years now, you know, like people change over time. Right. So, Yeah. Uh, Walt, do you think uh, this is going to be successful? Uh, I don't know if it's going to be successful or not, but I'm right there with, with Doug on, you know, uh, about that there needs, there, there needs to be some sort of way for them to, to be represented with employers. I mean, come on. I don't know now as far as why start with image. Yes. <laughs> All right. Yes. We got pets. We got pets. As, as far you as like going pet, after, pet appearances. Uh, as far it's as going new. after. Uh, <laughs> oh yeah, let's let's see the cat. That's Howdy. important. That's Howdy. important news. Yeah. yeah, look at that. What's the cat's name? This one's Peter Pan. Oh Peter Pan, that's a great name. Hey, Peter yeah, Pan. Captain Hook. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you got two. Yeah. So you have uh, Peter Pan and Captain Hook. That's, so that's Peter pretty Pan good. must be the friendly one. <laughs> Peter Pan is the friendly one. The other Peter one Peter Pan will, is cute uh, as can be. Dick and Jean. Okay, yeah. All right, that is good stuff. Sorry, I didn't mean That's to all right. Control. No, no, no. We, listen, <laughs> no, no we, we can always pause for some pets. Yeah. Uh, okay, so, uh, you know, do you think as a panel... Do you think that if they are successful here, that Marvel and DC are next? No, I think they're gonna go. <sighs> they'll try. Go down. I think it's gonna go. I think boom, they'll go to IDW. like Dark Horse or Boom. Yeah. Or, I mean, yeah, that might be the best way to go is to to get all the other small guys into it yeah. to give an incentive for it. Okay, you work for the big guys. Now you can come to us where we can take care of you. I I, I yeah. guess. Yeah. You know. I mean, eventually it'll get there, and uh, but as far as like, as far as like trying to go from image and then trying to take on DC and Marvel with that, 
Uh, no, it's not. It's not going to be. It, it's so much harder if uh, if I keep reiterate. There's o- there was only like twelve employees at Image, right? And that they're right. Yeah, 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 right. So yeah. I feel like you go to Oni or Dark Horse, whatever, who has minimal staff, and it's easier than DC and Marvel have to have at least you know in the thirties, if not more, you know, staffers. Yeah. So it's going to be a lot harder process to get everybody involved. Yeah, it's important to note that these are like you know office staff people yeah. that are doing this this is not necessarily but Artists. i mean you know once you kind of break that seal then you know maybe artists and of course you know image is a deal where you're kind of you're kind of doing your own thing anyway i mean their image is just kind of taking care of the back end for you you're they're kind of working for you in in some ways right. if you're a creator um so i you know i don't know if that necessarily applies but i mean doug your situation with with action labs is a perfect example of how like a comic book union could have helped you out in that circumstance. Yeah, for sure. And, and, you know, it depends on the, it it also depends on the situation too. You know, like you said, these are, these are image staffers. These are, these are front office people basically, you know, and if, and you have to, to me, for me, you know, having worked in, the corporate world for the last 12 years and so you know i can definitely see that happening and i definitely support them 100 percent after what i've seen in the corporate world the last 12 years go for it go for it yeah i would say that my general idea about not to get too political my general idea about about unions has evolved over you know working in corporate america for a while yeah. And, um, you know, looking at how, uh, you know, stockholders and um, big companies and, and executives run their show. And, um, you know, I, I can think of, t- I, I don't know much about, you know, whatever, corporate America, but I do know about comics and yeah. I do know about um, professional wrestling. And yes, I think I that those. Oh, I was about to bring I that think, up too. I was about I to bring that up too. I think both of those areas where it's like a work for hire deal, and you're not Run taking care of in any way with um, you know healthcare or anything, and you can be jettisoned at any time. I think, I, I think that that's the sort of thing that maybe even just the threat of unionizing might help, you know, rectify. And I mean, we've talked many times about how writers and artists for the big two, um, they continue to try to seek out people in, um, you know, nations where they can pay less and get more work out of them. Um, that 100% happens. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And I mean, you know, I love Jorge Jimenez's work. But there's a lot of other people, you know, like him that, you know, maybe could benefit from, you know, being brought up to a like a, a standard, you know, and so that you're looking out for for everyone, right? Where I mean, uh, right now it doesn't seem like they are. Plus, another good example is, uh, you know, just think about all those shipping carts or containers that are waiting to get in. So. You know, yeah, that's for sure. I mean, there's there's so many levels. You know, you you brought up the wrestling thing as as an idea, as a example. Oh, I mean, wrestlers are. I mean, just just talk to an old wrestler. Well, about their health care. Well, and just tell me if they should maybe be covered a little bit. Not only that, the the incidents is comics artists. Yeah, the the incident that happened just this past week in the wrestling world. I don't know if you if you heard about that. You know, eighteen wrestlers let go. Oh and, yeah, and and a lot of <laughs> a lot of big names like just this past week. So I mean, yeah, and that's it's, a it's, it's up to a hundred at this point in this year. While each quarter they're they're showing record number of profits, but we don't their budget cuts. You know, yeah, yeah. right. Uh, right um, unbelievable it doesn't make a lot of sense and i mean look you can look at dc and going back to comics you can look at dc and marvel and say that maybe they're struggling a little bit sales are not as great but they are 
they are jacked in with a much larger corporation that are using that intellectual property that those writers and artists are creating. And yeah, you're damn right. They can share a little bit of that wealth. Yeah, with, well, with don't forget people. Marvel, Marvel and DC just went to different distributors. So they didn't leave to make less money. So that means they got a better right, deal to right. make more money. Of course. You know, going through penguin books and the, uh, I th maybe they're both through penguin now. I can't remember, but there's, there's different distributors. It's not going through Diamond because Diamond DC's doesn't have DC's going through them, a so. couple of, I think, if I'm correct, a couple of retailers who also do mail order. Yeah. Yeah. They were doing Lunar, but then they were doing... That's right. Uh, it started Lunar. Yeah. And I think Marvel, Marvel's Penguin now, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I think that this is something that's going to catch on, folks. I don't think that this is the end of a story. I believe it's the beginning. Hey, you know, uh, I'm going to uh, disagree with you because we said this 20 years ago with wrestling and it still has not have nothing. So, <laughs> I mean, I, it's it, but it's still change. It's it's getting to that point with wrestling. I guess it is getting better. So you're yeah, right about that. So maybe it's just like, a long... there's, there's a difference there, though. I mean, that ended because one of their stars was able to put a kibosh on it. Right. He mm -hmm. was willing to say, hey, I don't want to be a part of this. Whereas these are just the workers currently. So I don't feel like there's an incentive to be like, I'm going to stooge out these guys and screw over the deal like Hulk Hogan did. Uh, right. Uh, I got just you. The... <laughs> right, right, right. Hey, Doug, is, Doug follows the wrestling too. Every so often we slip a little wrestling in here. I'm glad that I'm glad that you got to participate. Hey, <laughs> You're obviously following this just I, as much as we. I've always viewed wrestling as live action comic book heroes. So yeah. That's know. what I started to say. Pro wrestling was the closest link we have to live action superheroes growing it's true. up. So yeah. That's true. Long before the MCU. Oh, 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 look at Captain Hook. Oh, oh, oh my god, Hook. those cats are so cute. Look at Captain Hook. That is insane. Meow. Meow. Don't get me. <laughs> Don't get me. Respond. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Sean is not a fan of unions and yes th that's the reason why my situation has evolved is because yes there is a definitely a pattern of unions being There's you know dirty or corrupt or um money, you know, maybe pushing too far it, it, you know it, it like everything he says there can, should be an organization money. that holds these companies responsible but you know yep. if not the union then who i mean the but government's not going to do i've it. seen no. the union that we have at our job be very very helpful and keep very very helpful on keeping people who should have been fired long ago yeah yeah keep their jobs. right there's the right so yeah. i'm there's kind of wish other Sean, side I, of that coin. Yeah. i am i am very torn because I'm, I'm you see this person walk dude. back into work and you go what the hell? Yeah, they should have been gone a long time that ago. Is, that is for sure. That, that's <laughs> that's the one bad thing about unions is sometimes they they tend to back somebody who doesn't need to be backed. You know, that's the only that's the one thing. But other than that, as far as you know, like negotiating pay, negotiating health care, uh, and uh, you know, and all those other things. I think that's a great thing, you know, but there gets to the point where you talk about like, for instance, uh, what was that latest story on a union where they just found out that the guy who was in charge was embezzling money and all that kind of stuff. There needs to be somebody right. who keeps track of that stuff because that's the thing too, because yep. sometimes, sometimes unions can get a little bit too big and yep. like like all big corporations cause more be, problems than they solve they need to be broken up yep that's so true all right guys we're going to move on to the next subject and here it comes oh i'm not i'm not going to do that yeah just going to go with it I'm just going to go with it one? we're just yeah, going with it let's here just go we go with it. and i realize i realize what you guys are going to say here but just let me play devil's advocate for a minute from from variety they say Eternals scored the fourth best opening weekend for any movie during the pandemic era. It's an impressive number, and any other studio would be thrilled to have a launch of that size for its movie, especially given the challenging theatrical market. But for a Marvel venture, it's hard not to view it as falling short of their sky-high expectations. Internationally, Eternals took in $90.7 million dollars bringing its global haul, including North American uh, returns, to an impressive 
$161.7 billion. That's first week. Eternals is directed by Chloe Zhao, fresh off the Oscar-winning Nomadland, but reviewers griped that the film is long on exposition and light on entertainment. It has the ignominious distinction of being the only Marvel movie to draw a rotten rating on Rotten Tomatoes, with only 47% of reviews marked as positive. Audiences were also lukewarm on what Zhao cooked up, giving the film a so-so B cinema score, which is also a low point for Marvel. So, again, I just want to say I realize that I'm playing devil's advocate here, but my point on that is if you just let the fan holes talk without challenging them, then they eat up all the air. So I'm what I'm putting to to fan holes. <laughs> that's my that's my term, trademark, copyright, 2021. Um, since Scott is the only one on our panel who has seen the Eternals, I want to go to him and say, is this all all of this griping unjustified or is it justified? Um. I mean, I saw the movie without revealing anything. I I did not want to see the movie, but like Marvel hasn't. I've said it once again. They haven't gave us like really bad, terrible duds. I didn't get the first X Men movie from twenty years ago. I didn't get you know Spider Man three from twenty years ago and stuff like that. I mean, it wasn't a bad movie, but it's the Eternals, and I don't like the Eternals not very much in the in the comics right. um i just right. don't i just I don't... never have i've tried to read the old stuff and i know it was by jack king kirby yes. but like it was also in his later years you know like where he was f- flopping around to different companies and <laughs> you know that this is the same era that he did like you know devil dinosaur and machine man and so i mean some of those ideas have been great once they're in the hands of other people but like they still were at the end of his career, not at the height of his career. And Eternals is, you know, they're kind of like lame characters in a lot of ways. There's a few characters that came out of that. Cersei was one of them. She was an Avengers in the comic. Uh, my favorite one was Gilgamesh, the forgotten one, but nobody else in the world has a favorite character like that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Angelina Jolie, Selma Hayek, they could have been replaced with anybody else on this planet, but they were in there. So people like my dad go, oh, Angelina Jolie's in this? Right. I'd, li- I'd like to go see her. Hey, sure. for me, movie. it was Selma Hayek's in that? I'd like to go see Selma Hayek. Uh, go. Well, see, there you go. But <laughs> they wasted money because they ha- could have had somebody else play those parts. I get you. Overall, it was a way better movie than I thought it was. <laughs> Would I pay to go see it again in the theater? No. Was I happy I saw it? Because like it's part of that Marvel universe, and there's building blocks there that theoretically could be a big giant end event thing. Although we already know that Kang's gonna probably be the big big bad, but it kind of led up to some other little theories here. And no, I didn't hate it, and I think you know I hear a lot of people just saying I'm not gonna go see this, and I think you probably should see it and enjoy I've heard it. that a lot too. It, is it a little bit long? Sure. It's it's definitely long, but they kind of take this big scope of things just like they always do. It's some shots some shots look brilliant, but they don't have any like oomph behind them if that you know pat I don't know, like they're they're pretty, but at the same time they don't give me an emotional response. Um I I I didn't hate it, but here's what I think everybody a little bit is superhero fatigued and if if you take the pandemic away we'd get these out in a little bit probably different pacing but now we're getting them in different formats you can watch them at home so you know to me watching a movie at home versus watching in the theater is night and day difference um so like the experience has just been different this last year and we've got a whole bunch of these movies chopped in without like the pacing we're normally used to seeing. Sure. So I I think there's a lot of things going on here, but like (laughs) we can either recast Captain America or we can make the poor guy do it until he's 70 years old. And we had to decide what we want. And the Marvel universe has a lot of characters. So I don't think there's any problem doing something like this, but no, it's not going to get, I mean, like (laughs) before 
before all this, you could ask the man on the street, who's your favorite Eternal? And they wouldn't have known what an Eternal even is. <laughs> right. so, so there you go. Um, but maybe that's another thing. I didn't mind it as much because I've read comic books my whole life. So I kind of knew these dumb characters. And I'm not going to say what they brought up. I'll wait a couple episodes from now to talk about this thing that they did. But when they brought this thing up, I just was like laughing inside because in the comics, the thing they did, <clears throat> was pulled off really ridiculous and stupid. And I laughed even 25 years ago when I read it for the first time, but you know, they, they shined it up and made it Hollywood and you know, everybody loves it. So I think in time people will not hate this movie as bad as maybe they do right now. They are just not familiar with the characters. That, and, that's, yeah. that's the key right there. That's the key. Nobody's and, and, familiar with and, the characters. And I'm telling you right now, without giving any spoilers away, I think the character Cersei will be an Avenger and possibly lead a team of Avengers in the future Marvel movies. Is there any precedent for that in the comics? Uh, she was an Avenger also with uh, Dane Whitman, yep. who goes on to be the Black Knight. Um, there's no spoiler there because they leaked that all over everywhere. Yeah, they they um, said that all what they, his they name were was both be the Black Knight. They were both Avengers in the in the nineties. You know, they even wore their superhero costume and then a jacket on top because it was cold everywhere they went so it was very stylish <laughs> I, back then. i remember those days those were those were some and a lot of a lot of things on their belt a lot was, of pockets on their belt there but was I mean, a, there was a time where everybody had to have a similar uniform like i said i think people are just kind of fatigued with superheroes and one thing i am and this will be the last thing i say all these Marvel movies that's come out, Shang Chi's a pretty good movie. It's okay, you know, and Black Widow's okay, and all this stuff. But like, I'm really tired of the every movie has to have the villain that's gonna end the universe and kill everybody. I just want a guy who wants to get rich and has a couple of hostages, and I want him to be stopped because I don't need galactic <laughs> events every time on a movie or creatures from another dimension that's going to wipe out all eternity forever and ever i just i just want some basic superheroes so anyways brian says i agree with what scott says he's shutting himself to be very very wise oh god he's full of crap get out of here <laughs> uh well what do you think about this uh one i stopped trusting rotten tomatoes when they told me gi joe rise of cobra was a good movie Oh Jesus! <laughs> so, right. uh, yeah, you know, it, and this happens every time. Just because you know this movie didn't make that much, and I've talked about this before when uh, reading articles on uh, about movies in general. Marvel, you know, you see one article by let's say Screen Rant, it says Marvel made the same mistake they did in all their other movies in this movie, and then two weeks later, they come back with, same guy, Marvel corrected their mistake from this movie in the in this movie that I just trashed two weeks ago. So, <laughs> I true. don't, I don't, I don't listen to any of that stuff, so I'm gonna go see, you know, now that I'm getting a steady paycheck now, uh, I'm gonna time, go see Time the movie. to catch up? time to catch up so mm -hmm. i'm gonna go see it this weekend and i will let you know yeah D doug is the mcu doomed uh so i talk about this i think every all four times i've come on is uh, yes you know, corporations love to make all of the money not just a little bit of money if they're not making all the money then it's, so you know, true. the world's on fire right and um i could so true. see them trying to panic uh the next production you know it needs to be fixed immediately like you know dc has done in the past uh with their movies um but i think things are fine i think the next movies and tv shows all show that people are still into these you know properties um and how many people didn't go see the movie because it was so long i feel like i heard a lot of my friends and family that would have I heard that to too. It like it two forty, two hours and 40 minutes i think was i heard that too time. and it's just uh maybe that's i i'm somebody who was really excited for it uh just because it was near my birthday <laughs> and, <laughs> and, I, and i still managed to miss it so hey i mean they're complaining about it being too long 
these are probably some of the same people who couldn't wait to watch the the Snyder cut. Yeah, or, or uh, uh, you know, uh, the, the, the full season of Loki or Captain America or whatever. <laughs> the the uncut version of all the uh, uh, Lord of the Rings movies. The, it, yeah. I, I just think these are just you know you have people who are uh, you have people who are Marvel haters and you have people who are DC haters and and then you have people who are just outright superhero movie haters and they're just trying to stir up the pot. Eh, I don't listen. I don't listen to any of them. D- Doug, you made up a, a great point though. Like so, <laughs> I think I lost some of my life this weekend because we went and saw Dune on Friday night. Then we saw <laughs> Eternal <laughs> the next morning, and they're both long <laughs> movies. And as everybody knows, I can hold my bladder, but once I think it, I have to pee. Have I'm to the guy it. that counts the trailers, and I go, okay, that's the fourth trailer. I go oh, I go run and pee, and I come back and sit down and try not to ever think about it again. <laughs> I have to pee again. One of the guys at the theaters said, I don't know why, with these long movies, they just don't put an intermission. And it was a young kid. He goes, it helps our sales, too. We make more money because people come and grab a drink and stuff. I wonder why they're so scared to put a small intermission in there. They used to do that. You know what? Uh, It's funny you mentioned that, too, because, and I, you know, kind of off track, but still on track. Uh, The movie, uh, It's a Mad, 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 Mad World, that old movie from the 60s. Mm -hmm. Uh, When you get that on DVD... It has the intermission in it. Oh, that's a great! <laughs> it it has the intermission and it plays the. Little I remember Excalibur had an intermission. Yeah, and uh, you know what? You're right. They need to bring back the intermission. I'm sure some accountant has figured out, like Doug said, they want they they can't just have a lot of money. They need every money, <laughs> they, and they figured out they lose one like half show a day if they that's don't. That's the do deal. It. Is they what they want is to get a certain number of showings in a day, and if you put an extra, I don't know, fifteen minutes in there, they may lose a showing. Well, let me give you. Let me give the movie theaters, Mr. Warren, Bill Warren. If you're listening, you make a movie theater that has its I'm own sure bathroom, is. like our IMAX does here and more. But you pipe the sound in of the movie into that bathroom, and if yeah, I have to idea. take, and if I accidentally have to take a douche because I ate too many milk duds in the middle of this movie, I can go to the bathroom and still <laughs> listen to it hey. and not be mad as hell. So. <laughs> Even even better, I don't Scott. Know why they don't do that? Even better, Scott. The movies now are digital, so they can put screens in the there, in, there. in the do bathroom that. in the bathrooms. Each people theater leave has them. its own bathroom. People wouldn't leave them. I'm about to there say some go. people would sit there the whole time. <laughs> I, I agree with Sean's comment. He made another comment about the yeah. Movie. I, I was letting you guys uh, talk yourselves out there. Ah. Uh, Sean says that this is a foundational movie to set up the film's upcoming. Uh, this is not Correct. a great movie, but it's a good piece of a larger puzzle. Correct. And I, I felt, agree. you know, I felt that Shang Chi was actually pretty good. Uh, I enjoy, as far as you know, origin story movies. I thought that it, I thought it did a great job. And I heard a lot of stuff when that came out. They're like, eh, I'm just oh, yeah, interested yeah, yeah. in this. I don't know anything about these things. Oh, there were um, so, there was look, other to, things too. <laughs> I, I think you have to realize that we're at the beginning of another 10 year period here and we're at the beginning of it. So, you know, everything that's old is going to get renewed. You know, the Avengers are going to be different and all, you know, all of the stuff that they have coming down the pike is going to look at things, you know, introduce you to new characters and, you know, uh, put, put a new spin on the old characters and new stuff. Beginnings. So just, this is just, season two. Just relax. We're in the first, you know, couple of years of another 10 year cycle. And then all of these fan holes who are saying that it's going to to die off in, you know, the MCU is over and stuff are the same people that are going to be crapping their pants in 10 years when they have the big crossover movie with whoever it is, Galactus or. And we we have our. You know, whatever. We have our big. Captain and you have America, the big Holmes, thing, and Thor, they're going to bring in Chang Chi, and they're going to bring in the Eternals, and everyone's going to be like, "Oh my God, this is so amazing!" Yeah, we're not at that point yet. That's let's hope they kill. Give off it the eight Eternals. more years. So, you, so, want, so, so. you want them to be gone? Most of them. Wow. Uh, let me show you some some statistics, which I get a kick out of. I, I do wish the, it was brighter and more Jack Kirby 
vibrant. I, I Someone like. said that it should have looked like the last Thor movie, where it's like all of the yeah. bright colors and all the crazy wacky graphics that oh, yeah, were on that the wall and stuff. You know, because that's the way the Eternals look in the comics. Yeah, yeah they went it, totally, totally different it looks, with the look. It looks more Dune. <laughs> yeah. Sure. Sure does, uh, Doug. So here's the top domestic opening weekends for film after March 2020. So this is pandemic. I, I, can't, I can't see any of that. That's okay. I'm going to read it. Number one is Venom 2, right? $90 okay. million. Then after that, Black it's Widow. so shocking to me. People just love. Number one is Venom <laughs> 2. Doug, you, you never the, can underestimate the most common denominator, and most people are stupid. Uh, the the <laughs> next the, three the films. Resident Evil. Uh, I guess. Hey, Dirk used to have Dirk used to have a thing with my ex-wife. If she liked it, the most common person <laughs> would like it, and it would be a success because it's on a lower scale of like, right. Oh, everybody can understand this, right? I yeah. love Blade Runner twenty forty nine, but I am not the typical moviegoer. You cannot base <laughs> shit on stuff that I like. That's no good at all. But yeah, that's right. She loved the basic. She was kind of a basic person. And uh, um, so, yeah, if she was really thrilled about it, it was a good indicator that, that you know, the general public would be thrilled about it. Too. <laughs> so anyway, my, my point is that the next three movies, Black Widow, Shang-Chi, and Eternals, two through four are all Marvel movies. So what are you complaining about? Right. I mean, seriously. all the money. I mean, yeah, I mean, come on, well, is that really? And Venom is also a Marvel movie, by the way. It's just not a, you know, it's just not produced by Marvel Studios. So they own the top four things. What what are you complaining about? And they that own is, number 10, too, so, you know. Uh, well, true. Well, Disney does. The next one is F9, which is your basic movie. Your basic right popcorn movie. Uh, then the James Bond movie, Halloween Kills. Halloween Kills is number seven. Congratulations to them on that. A Quiet Place, another horror movie, and then Dune. I'm glad Dune is in the top ten. That's cool. I'm glad Dune is in there, too. Yeah. So, anyway, you know, look. If if you own the top five, four movies, uh, it sure. ain't over yet, folks. Yeah, it ain't sure. over yet. Yep. Uh, all right. That's all my goodies I got on that. Let's get to On Blast. What do you say? Sure. Mm, if I can find it. Oh, I can't wait to reorder these. <laughs> In record time, we're on blast. All right. Uh, let's go. Scott, do you want to go first on this, or you want me to get Walt? Or? Uh, I don't care. I got a lot of stuff, so it's up to you. Wow. Okay, we're gonna go to Walt first. On blast is just stuff that you've seen or watched or I got read a lot of stuff to promote. or you know games or whatever. So we're gonna go first to Walt on that. So as you know, I haven't done much, so I'm way behind on buying DVDs. Luckily, there's Netflix. So yeah, there's uh, Netflix. I watched uh, the Heart of They Fall, the, the the cowboy movie with Idris Elba and uh, Hey Steve John, and Jonathan Majors over the weekend uh <laughs> great movie great movie by the way uh if you're into if you like cowboy movies uh specifically oh, yeah. specifically if uh it's like me i like i like things that are kind of historic you know i'm kind of a history buff uh the harder they fall is about it all the characters are based off of real uh, historical black cowboys from back in the day, but the story is fictional. So you've got some uh, actual black uh, cowboy outlaws and you got some actual black uh, cowboy lawmen. So uh, uh, Delroy Lindo, if anybody here is a fan of Delroy Lindo, plays, uh, oh, now I can't remember, um, Bass Reeves. Oh, okay. Uh, Jonathan Majors is the uh, is the main character and you've got Zazie Beetz, and, oh, I like uh, her. Oh, yeah. Every, every, hey, if, if you watch it, you'll recognize everybody in that movie and everybody put, all the actors put on a, a phenomenal performance in that movie. It's great. I, cool. I highly recommend If you like cowboy movies and shoot 'em ups. I do. And uh, uh, it's it's really a spaghetti western. It Basically, it's a spaghetti western. I 
highly recommend it. And uh, Jonathan Majors is quickly becoming one of my favorite guys too. Oh, uh, he he puts on a great performance in this movie. Mm-hmm. Uh, and of course, Idris Elba plays uh, the bad guy. And oh. of course, we all love Idris Elba too. So yeah, he's also you know. awesome. Highly my, recommend. My mom and Sean's mom agree. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and all the other women across the, the world. It's a, like I said, it's a great movie. Uh, I watched it and then I was like, you know what? I got to watch it again. So I watched it twice. One, you know, wow. just to, just to pick up on the, some of the uh, little things. Do you have any other movies <clears throat> for us? Nope. That's it. That's it. Oh, wow. That's it. Holy, holy I, cats. Hey, I'm, you know, that's what happens when you live in the po house. Holy cats. All right. Well, we're going to Doug <laughs> next then. Here you go, man. I'm in kind of a consumption mode, so I'm watching a lot of stuff. I'm reading a lot of stuff. Uh, I'll just mention a couple things. Uh, I just finished uh, Wu-Tang, uh, the American story. It's, uh, I just watched both seasons. Yeah. I'm really enjoying that. Kind of uh, going to their uh, startup and how they became their group and stuff like that. I, I'm really enjoying that. Cool. Uh, uh, me and my wife just started Narcos, uh, Mexico, start season three. Uh, we have like a weird fascination with that kind of. Stuff. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, that's fuel for your that. comics. Yeah, uh, um, she's she's a native Spanish speaker, so it's nice for her to watch something where she doesn't have to read the subtitles the full way through. Huh. You know, to keep up. So cool. I, I get to play the game, uh, and um, the last thing is I. Uh, have to talk about this it's called the great pretender it's about a it's an anime it's about a um japanese uh, uh con man thief that uh thinks he's one of the best in the world until he runs into an american con man who just completely uh, uh, upholds him and uh so he goes to try to learn from this con man and it's, it's <laughs> just <laughs> amazing action for an anime it's <clears throat> hilarious it's like everything i want and it's pretty short it's two seasons it, and it um, sounds awesome what what's the name of it again yeah. the great pretender the great pretender the great pretender i'm gonna uh, check that out where is it what, available this? yeah On netflix yeah. okay I, I was wondering because i i remember seeing i remember seeing that title and i didn't know what it was and uh, yeah that's the thing it was it, it's like the image that they put you're like I don't, but I read the yeah. description. I was like, con man gets conned. And I was like, okay, I'll, I'll try this Sounds out. cool. I really liked it. I have to check that one out. Very cool. Is that it? Is oh, that it, one last thing. I haven't, I haven't Before watched. Before we unleash Scott. I haven't watched uh, <laughs> all of it, but uh, the second season of the new Animaniacs is on Hulu now. And uh, if, if you just watched the first episode, you know all of America is triggered. So I'll just put it that way. <laughs> Nice. Interesting. Yeah. Uh, all right, Jackie Daytona, you are up. All right. So uh, <laughs> we have been watching some the new season of What We Do in the Shadows. <laughs> oh, that is a good show. Me too. <laughs> it's, it's great. Uh, we're, we're not through the whole thing yet. <clears throat> I've been watching My Hero Academia with my daughter. As really? I recently started uh, playing, trying out the Universes card game, which is themed around My Hero Academia, which is like, a Magic the Gathering type game, but you're fighting with characters and stuff. Anyways, What's I got that? other stuff to show you. So, <laughs> anyways, so this is a project. This came from uh, a friend of mine who I, I played Blood Bowl with um, named Joe Smith. He started a company called Windmill, Win, W I N, Milled, M I L L E D. I have a link in the uh, banners here, Dirk. I'll put that up right here. Right below, you can see this. You can find him on Facebook. He sent me this product here that he's doing for his company, another wood graving company. So this is, uh, he sent one to, of these to the Boat Down podcast. So it has my name and, you know, our podcast logo and stuff on there, which is always cool. And inside, it has these, as you can see, the little magnets on the edges. So okay, it kind of yeah. can fit into this nice. box. And inside here, it can hold a pin. It can hold the Blood Bowl dice, which we have our block dice, and then regular dice here. And when I got this, it didn't have dice in there. 
And I got to admit, I first saw this and I was like, well, there's no way in hell dice are going to fit in there. So then I went back through my collection to find some dice and put them in there. He also had made some uh, little tokens and stuff, some handmade tokens for this project. And believe it or not, I can't really do this here because it's this. The top can be used as a little dice tray and it actually works because I didn't think it would work either. Oh, and then I did it over and over again. So if you're playing in a confined area on a tabletop and you needed some place to roll dice and have a little mini dice tray, you can. So it makes a nice ASMR plinky sound. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so anyways, he's selling these on uh, his Facebook page or through Etsy or something like that. But I wanted just to give a shout out to him because I think this is like a $40 product or maybe even more. And he just gave it to me by just saying, like, would you review it and give me your honest opinions on it? So there you go. Anyways, nicely done. So there's that. And so I'm going to stay on the topic of Blood Bowl because we just got this in today. There is a uh, big release of a new Blood Bowl team. What and are you talking you... about, Steve? <laughs> what you talking about, Steve? <laughs> a blood box. Yeah, exactly. So Blood Bowl is a game of fantasy football made by Games Workshop over in England. And I do a podcast called Both Down. And we've done this for over 10 years now. And we just put up a new episode uh, last week. And um, they sent us a bunch of the free product of the stuff that's going to come out. I think either this Saturday or next Saturday it releases. So we got this like free of charge to just review and we review their products. So this is like a blood bowl team card set. So what, I, what is a card set? I don't understand what, what so, that does. real quick. If you look at the team card set, this is, it's better for like new people because like if you were playing for the first time, Dirk, and you were playing this, this corn team, I'm not, my camera's not focusing. Right there you now. go. You got it. You can see like the skills of the player. Okay. You could, you could write in skills, a name or whatever else. So All they right. give you some blank cards. Now for us veteran players, and I say this every time, even though they send this stuff for me for free, <sighs> I, I tell them like, this is useless for us veteran players. Now, if I was a newbie, maybe this would be good. Um, they also have like little skills. So when you're playing for the first time with this team, you can know the skills of your linemen. I your mean, cor your corner gore. So yeah, yeah that has might positionals. be helpful. Yeah, and then it has these special play cards with which some people use these. Some people. If you don't, don't play fourteen times a week, you might not know all this shit. Well, and that's that's what it's made for. <laughs> I mean, it is made for that. So I'm not bashing them. I I'm more than anything bashing the price of this because these cards are fairly everything's expensive nowadays. I mean, oh boy! So what, how much are they? I think this is twenty five bucks. Oh. That's, that is steep. It might have gone up. Uh, they also sent this really cool. Came by slow boat from China. They sent this cool <laughs> corn. This is a this is a brand new team for the game. So this team has never this race has never been in the game of Blood Bowl before. So this is kind of a new big deal. Wh what are new, they? They're uh, worshippers of the god Corn, the blood god in the <laughs> Warhammer universe. <laughs> and that's K H O R N E. K H. That is definitely the team for Brian. <laughs> oh, yeah, corn. <laughs> but they're all, you know, hell bent on destruction and everything. It comes with this is what we love the most because this is like a little magazine that has like what we call fluff. And that's what we talk about a lot of times in our Blood Bowl podcast. It talks about the background. So you can, it's kind of like I always say Blood Bowl's a role playing, sports role playing game. And this is where you can get a lot of that you know, backdrop on like other corn teams in the past, what they've done, how successful they were, their star players. Um, it I helps, you, Scott, helps you get it, helps you get a feel on how to play. The, exactly. The team. Scott, <clears throat> you make every game a role playing game. Like damn, you, you're damn right. I do. When we played Dune, you had whole backstories uh, without ever reading Dune or seeing the movie. You had all kinds of backstories about relationships and things that were going on behind the scenes. It's exactly how I have fun. Comic books give me an escape from the real world because most of the time the real world sucks. Let me escape. Here is a uh, pitch or a field that you could custom, you know, you can have for your team. I mean, this is a $50 value alone. And then finally they sent us, and these are going to be kind of hard to see, but a little cube of the 
We can see the, them. Oh yeah, the, little, the, dice. the little, little team dice. You know, they have special colors. A lot of people collect these. Dude, I mean, that's this cool. Is, this is eighteen fifty. So they yeah. sent us over a hundred dollars worth of product here for no other reason but because we have a Blood Bowl podcast that I guess they trust hey, enough to send product to hey. and we review these. So, well, you know, Scott, you know, I recently told you I ran into somebody who, you know. I never met before, and I mentioned you, and they're like, "Oh yeah, I listen to them." So. <laughs> that's, I think that's great. Uh, How they crazy also is that? they just announced it like a Warhammer World thing that they're coming out with a. We had this back when I was in junior high, a game called Dungeon Bowl, you know, twenty five thirty years ago, and they're redoing that, and it's going to be maybe out by Christmas time. It's a box set that's like a hundred and sixty dollar value that's Blood Bowl played inside of a dungeon where you have exploding treasure chests where you're trying to find the ball and stuff like that. So anyways, it's a, it's a cool alternative to blood bowl is dungeon bowl. And then uh, last but not least, and then I'll stop talking is uh, I read this today. I liked it so much. It's a Tom King book. It's called the human target. God, I got my, all this reflection. In it. No, it's good. And Greg small Lord. Yeah. Oh gosh. This, I, let me tell you something. Tom King is a good writer, but he is so lucky that he gets these amazing, not just artists, but the, the way these guys design their pages and stuff and the colors yeah. and everything he, else. He gets that, to choose his artist. Okay, yeah. well, I'm telling you, they probably stand in line wanting to work with him, but like, this is this is good stuff. And That's a I, very well laid out book. I must admit, this is like... Ooh, that I is probably, nice. This is like the first time I've read anything of Christopher Chance or whatever this character's name is. The really? human target that I remember. But um, Oh, I like is, that character. This is one of those Tom King books I only bought because Tom King. And then I read it and I was like, okay, I'm in. You got me. Hey, that's the old Justice League. Yep. This uh, is the old Justice that's League. The, yeah. No, no, no. That's the um, International. De Matisse. Yeah. yeah, this is the Giffen de Matisse yes. Justice League. Yes. Or are they called the Brouhaha because they're laughing. Anyways, it's a very good book. There's another cover out that's even better than this one, in my opinion. Uh, but I saw the other cover after I bought this one. So I didn't buy two copies. <laughs> um, anyways, it's good. I tweeted it out, and the power of the internet is amazing because I'm a nobody. And you know, Tom King picked it up and retweeted, like, "Hey, this guy likes my books." So. That's insane that Tom King uh, retweeted your thing. I bet you he listens to both down. Uh, yeah, I bet he. He's does. a big fan of that. He's a big fan of both down. <laughs> uh, Steve says, "Dang, that's beautiful." The biggest guy I know that listens to both down is one of the uh, storyboard artists for uh, Adventure Time. Uh, he he listens nice. to us That's pretty cool. all the time. So, nice. Yeah. We what time is it? Some... But what time is it? <laughs> it's adventure time. It's adventure all time. Right. <laughs> Anyways. So th- that's all I got. Uh, let's say I've just w- been watching some My Hero Academia slowly, watching some What We Do in the Shadows, which is just brilliant. Oh, just and, brilliant. and it's uh, funny stuff. And I saw and, Dune. I saw Dune, which I might be the you first. Saw Dune. Oh, yeah. Dune. Yeah. It might be the first movie I've seen in a long time where, you know how you watch a movie or, or let's just say like, let's use the walking dead. I watched an episode of the walking dead. Why did they do this when they already showed in a, another episode that this doesn't work or this works, but they did something totally stupid. You know, I didn't question any character's motivation in Dune. It was I tight. Didn't, I didn't copy. I didn't question any, like, why didn't they go around the mountain instead of through the mountain? Everything made sense. I couldn't complain about anything except for <laughs> whispering, and I got bad hearing, so it's probably my fault. <laughs> See, that was, smart that was my adult mo- science fiction. That was my mom's That was my mom's problem with, with Dune. She's like, what did he say again? You I know? think some of it was meant for us not to hear totally yeah. clear. Oh, and uh, Derek, one last thing. There was one other thing that I did get to do since the last time I've been on on uh, the, the stream. I did get to go to Empire Toys that's here, and I need to show this off because Empire Toys here in Keller, Texas, they have their own beer. You may, If you've been on the uh, Task Force Geek Facebook page. Do uh, you have it? I have, it. I have the can. I have the can. They have their own. Showing they up. have their own. They have their own little. Uh, oh, that's cool! <laughs> it's called Naked B- Rambo. They have their own beer. <laughs> it's called Naked Rambo, and it's because uh, they have this action figure that one of the uh, owners, their mom, bought this action figure. Yeah, and it was a uh, uh, a bootleg Rambo action figure, and it was naked. So. <laughs> 
it's their it's their store mascot. Wow. <laughs> and so uh, another another uh, uh, customer who just happens to uh, run an IPA decided, hey, why don't I make a beer for you guys and call it Naked Rambo? Wow, that's cool. And so they're not licensed to sell it. Uh, yeah, it's a it's a uh, pris- I, I want to say prismatic, so to speak, but it's I a mean, it's, okay. a de- it's, Pretty. it's a decal on a on a can. So oh, okay, because it looks it looks like. <laughs> so if you're of age and you happen to go buy Empire Toys on uh, in Keller, Texas, ask for a sample of of this. Tell tell them that we would very much like for them to sponsor the show. Hey, we, I, we would I like for them to. To, I, we would like to be sponsored by Naked Rambo Beer. <laughs> hey, they they we got to get them on the show. They are willing let's to come on. The show. Yeah, so, yeah, let's uh, get them on. Yeah, and and I say you know sometime next summer, uh, let's try to do a show when they have their uh, sidewalk sale. Oh, great! Yeah, they have. Sidewalk I would sales, love to do so. stuff live or whatever. Yeah. So I I told them just you know if. If you just want to come on the show, if you don't have anything to promote, you just want to come on the show and just talk, you're welcome to come on. So, and they're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, we'll I, get I them a, on here. Cool. Yeah, let's do it. Seriously. Uh, Scott, I got a question for you. Have you ever played Car Wars? I have never played Car Wars, believe it Really? Um, today, Larry and Ken were talking about playing the new version of Car Wars. Apparently, There's a new one out. There's a new okay. one out. I heard it's really good. How but. long? How long ago did it come out? I want to say in the last two years, I could look up r- real quick. Give me just a few uh, seconds here. I, I used to play Car Wars and loved it, but I mean, the, this new version is—I mean, the maps are super cool, and uh, you know, we used to take uh, we used to take copies of the, the the chart for the car and then put them in like plastic sleeves and use grease pencils. <laughs> to mark damage. I mean, this is back in the eighties, folks. <laughs> um, you don't have to do that now. I mean, they have much better stuff. This one is uh, from twenty twenty one. It's Car Wars Sixth Edition, and on Game Board Geek, it has an overall rating. Now, uh, you know, you can believe what you want on these ratings. Some of them get inflated just by fans going in there and putting ten <laughs> when they never sure, even sure. played the game. But it has an eight point three. So that's, hey, that's not pretty a bad good. Game. And yeah, the components on this new newer game are pretty outstanding compared I to would the love stuff to in the play past. that game again. Yeah, I'd well, love to play that. It's game time again. for you to buy games. I already have right. two hundred games. You need fair to buy enough. Games. Fair enough. <laughs> but I'm, I'm looking at play. it right now. I'm looking at it right now. Yeah. Are you? Yeah. Walt's got a new check coming in. <laughs> Uh, Walt hasn't spent money, so he is like ready to get man, out there. The next on blast with Walt is going to be insane. Yeah, you know what, and, and you know what, you're going to be like. So, yeah. what'd you get this week? You know, There's what? Car Wars. If it's like, to go. that's cool. It's like, you're, I'm going to be like, you know what? I got, I got some extra creamer for my coffee. I got the extra large, big bag of, of coffee. Uh, Thank you. I, I got, got some, some cheese for a sandwich. I got, <laughs> I got some asparagus in the refrigerator. You know, I'm I bought. Sorry. You know, I'm. Uh, what is it? I bought a can of spinach, and I don't even like spinach, but I can afford it now. <laughs> wow. So. <laughs> wow, I don't know who who can afford any trip to the grocery store anymore. It's it's getting ridiculous, but oh, we can save that old like, man rant for later. Oh God, okay. Uh, Steve says, and now a word from our sponsor. When you have when you have a naked Rambo. Hey, I'm. I, I can just can you picture? I'm already picturing. I'm already picturing Dirk doing a voiceover of Naked Rainbow you I know, would, and, and people standing around drinking Naked Rainbow. That would be a career then, high for me. And the Naked Rainbow action figure is like floating around, you know, like walking through the crowd behind us. <laughs> I'll dress up like Naked Rainbow. Almost no, everybody's seeing me naked. Let's, let, let's, not, let's not do that, Scott. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my, my on blast is going to be pretty quick. I, I have been slowly watching the a uh, 2012 version of the first season of Star Blazers and it is spectacular. It is really good. I mean, I am an old old school. I mean, Star Blazers is really the thing well in Battle Battle of the Planets um you know, really captured my imagination and what they managed to do with this new version is number one, pay tribute to the old stuff. It's it's very, you know, it follows, in general, it follows the old 
version of Star Blazers. But man, the stuff that they added in, the character development, new characters, new situations. They cleaned up a lot of the stuff that was kind of silly and added some stuff that's, you know, a lot more interesting. The graphics on it is amazing. By the time I got to the end of the season, I mean, it really it really captured me emotionally. I mean, it was really, I mean, it paid off in really uh, spectacular <laughs> ways. I mean, just the whole th- just the way that they did it. I mean, it's obvious that, that they looked at the whole thing and they said, you know, how can we improve this? How can we make it hit harder at the end? I'm how take can we credit. make it more interesting politically? You know, like, like the, the, what is it? The gamma? It's not gamma. Gamma. Uh, Gamma's. Gamma's. Yeah. Uh, you know, the, the way that they portray them is a lot more interesting. Um, oh, it's just, and oh, right around, right around episode, what is it, 18, 19 or something like that. If you are into space battles, it is space oh. battle nirvana. I yes. mean, it is some of the greatest, I mean, I don't care whatever, uh, Star Wars, Star Trek, whatever you got. I mean, it is absolutely some of the best space battle stuff that's out there. I mean, in by a and by a light year. I mean, it's just really quality stuff. And so, and a new third season I, is coming up pretty soon. I just want to say yes, they have a second season which I have not seen yet. And uh, Steve is coming coming in here and saying that they have yet another. Yeah, in the new Star Blazer series. Yeah, it's gorgeous. It's absolutely gorgeous. And by the way, I watched it on Funimation for free. It's free. You can go there, download the app, whatever you got. I watch it on Xbox, whatever you know you use to, to get your apps and stuff. Uh, you can pay for it and eliminate a bunch of stupid repetitive commercials. But you can also watch that for at least the first season of Star Blazers, and it's well worth free. Believe me, it's worth your time to watch it. It's I, really, it's, I give it my highest recommendation. I'm, it is really I'm going to say it's worth paying for. I think Doug's trying <laughs> to talk. Certainly, certainly. Go ahead, Doug. I'm sorry. No, I'm, I'm racking my brain. There's another um, poli- military political space battle drama like, like Star Blazers that came out and got redone here recently. I know. I it's love called it so Legends much. of Something. Yes, 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 yes. Oh, man, what is that called? I, it's awesome also. Now, I have not watched all of those. Yes. And unfortunately, that's not yeah. free, so I'm the going Galactic to have to pay. Heroes. This. Legends of the Galactic Heroes. There it is, yes. It, it, also excellent yeah, yes. and even more political. I mean, it's insane how behind the scenes and political and str- strategy and stuff that they get into this. That that is all. That's a great call out, Doug. <laughs> That is also excellent series, especially if you like Star Blazers. It, absolutely, yeah. You that should, you should I'm, check that thing out. I'm gonna have to take credit for leading you towards that uh, that uh, new Star Blazers, the the remake, I should say, the re, the reboot. It's insanely and good. I've I've watched it's insanely those first... good. I wanted to just I just wanted to take off all of my clothes and run up and down the street. <laughs> <laughs> when I saw the last episode. I've, it's like I had to celebrate. It was like this is so good. I've watched both of those seasons at least three times, and I, every time I, I I'm just as amazed the first time as the first time I've watched it. I mean, I love I loved what they did. Uh, I want the model kits for of all the fighter jets. Unfortunately, when I find them, oh, I see the prices and I nearly uh, have a heart attack. They do not have a Cosmo Navy T-shirt, and I asked Sean to mock up one of those for me so I could print one for me because I want the generic Cosmo Navy yeah, yeah, yeah. T-shirt to wear around because I, I think that's I'm, the coolest thing in the planet. I'm sorry I want one of the new uniforms, too. They're awesome. Or you, you mean in the, the movie yeah, uniforms, the, the, the one no, with no, leather, not, the leather jackets. No, or no, no, not the leather jackets. The one in the in the remake of the cartoon. The the all the, the design uniforms, is amazing. The un, the new uniform designs are amazing. You know, and they there's your they actually have the official, you know, Cosmo. Yeah, uh, like, I gotta have. It's, I gotta have that stuff it's awesome it's, it's it made great. me feel like uh, i was 18 eight years old again yeah same here uh all right well let's let's go to promo time folks and let's start first with doug who is our guest and uh doug tell everyone where to find you okay 
please find me on Twitter at Doug A. Wood, number one. Um, my Kickstarter is going well right now. Uh, simply put, it's uh, uh, the guy is sentenced, I mean, sorry, framed, sentenced, and then flung through time. Now he's out for revenge. If you like things like Looper and meeting Sin City, this is the comic for you. It's a one shot. You can't get any uh, better than that. Yeah, and you're doing well on it. Uh, let's get over there and help him out. Let's get him over the the uh, the funded goal. Thank you. Uh, also, I'd, I I want to ask uh, mention your Gumroad account too, which is a good way oh, to kind of find you. out. But I mean, seriously, you should. Everyone who's watching right now should go subscribe to Doug's Twitter account. I promise you, you won't regret that. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Let's see, we got a comment here. Steve says, check Redbubble or Etsy for stuff. You know, I have, and I'm telling you right now, they don't have what I want. I, I I want, they have poor versions of it, or it has like people's picture on it. I want it to look like I'm actually in the Cosmo Navy, and that's the T-shirt that I would wear. That's what I want. It's, it's, I don't want it to have the the Yamato on there and all that. I don't want all that. I, I want it, it to just say Cosmo Navy so there's like, 12 people on the planet that will get what I'm doing there. <laughs> it, it, it's it's like getting the uh, the Discovery, uh, Star Trek Discovery disco shirt, you know, how they just have. Yes, So exactly. I want the real deal Holyfield. Uh, all right, Scott, you're up next, man. All right. You can oh, find me. Uh, you can find me at Real Scott Prime on Twitter. You can go over to bothdown.com if you want to check out the latest Number one Blood Bowl podcast out in the world where we talk fluff and our opinions on stuff. And I always tell I always tell everybody that it's like sitting with us in our living room and just talking about a game we love. And it shocks me every time you put out an episode and then you touch somebody's heart that, you know, says like, you know, hey, through this pandemic, I've been kind of lonely. Thank God you guys came out to entertain me, you know, blah, blah, whatever it is, you know, and it just shows, goes to show you like how small or maybe like just how the reach of a, of the internet to reach out to somebody and, you know, you can um, just talk to somebody and be their friend, even though it's indirect and stuff like that. Anyways, it always shocks me the feedback we get. So uh, latest episode of both down is up there. And, you know, if you ever want to reach out to us, you can always uh, reach out to us at both down podcast at gmail.com and talk to us directly. So that's some ways to find me. Cool. Scott shares a lot of cool stuff too. You ought to get over there and follow his stuff. All right, Walt, you're up. Hey, you can find me at Instagram right here. I got it right there. Uh, but you can also find me on Facebook at Walt, uh, excuse me, what studios presents Walter cons. That's my Facebook page. Uh, there you can uh, get all the information for me doing if you want me to do uh, any commissions or anything like that or anything else. Like right now, I've got a food truck project. So uh, you can also keep up with me at what studio cool. art dot blogspot dot com uh twitch dot tv gatchet man gacha man underscore one so there's your uh battle, battle of the planets and then you can also find me on zazzle if you just search for what studio art i sell some little goodies on there too so very cool good stuff thank you all right i'm just putting that up right now well i'm gonna take off Walt. Um, I am celebrating 20 years on my main site, which I will not repeat here because it's for adults only. <laughs> but I'm still celebrating the 20 years. I might as well uh, tell you what I'm doing on there. I am giving other people a discount despite the fact that it's that it's uh, my anniversary. You get the present. So my Kink Kink portraits are $25 off. My duochrome and paintings are $50 off. And if you're interested in uh, my photography services, those are $100 off. And that goes through November 22nd. So uh, you can check me out over at Ranking Studios. And that is the tiny URL for that Ranking Hooper there. All right. Oh, that I wanted to say what I was just looking back through your Twitter and you had that um, art of, I think, a vampire lady. Yeah. For the pitch. Oh, my God. That's yep. so good. Thank you. I appreciate that. That's cool. That was a, a, 
a fun little project there for sure. I enjoy doing that. Oh, we got we got Kitty. Got Peter Pan. Yeah, he's he's back. Kitty. <laughs> Thank you, Steve, very much. Uh, does anyone have anything they want to add, or are we done? I think we're done. I'm done. Thank you so much for having me on, guys. I like I say every single time. This is my favorite one to come on. I didn't even take on any extra podcasts this one, and this is the one I like. Hey, can I come on still? Oh yeah, you can come on anytime. You're always welcome. As a matter of fact, if you're not shilling stuff and you still want to come on, uh, come on, Doug. You can you can join us anytime. Absolutely. All right. Yep. Thank you're you. you're one of the guys. Thank you very much. Absolutely. Uh, thanks also to Scott and to Walt. Thanks to everyone who's watching us. We sure do appreciate it. Uh, please leave a like or share wherever you see this. We do appreciate it. Uh, for Scott, for Walt, for Doug, I'm Dark Hooper. And until next time, dream hard. <laughs>